So, um, for those of you who don't recognize me, um, my name is Grifter. Um, I've spoken several times at DEF CON before. I didn't steal this shirt. I'm a goon and run several of the contests here at DEF CON. And uh, you are? And my name is Tierra. For um, maybe a number of you know me from the scavenger hunt. Uh, that's been running that for the past three years here at DEF CON. Um, all right, I guess we'll get started. Uh, basically, uh, I know the, the thing in the program is kind of vague. Uh, Project Prometheus is the uh, tentative name for a tool that we started working on a couple months ago and then were absolutely flooded with things to do for this con among other cons and things like that. Uh, so we decided that we couldn't get the work done to release the tool at DEF CON, so we would do a talk on it at, at DEF CON and see if there was any community interest, if we were wasting our time, or if people thought it was kind of cool. So um, I guess I will start with uh, how many people know what alternate data streams are? All right, cool. That will help. There is a large number of you. Um, for those that don't know, uh, NTFS, the file system for the Windows server-like operating systems, uh, 2000 XP, NT, yada, 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 um, have support for uh, the HFS or hierarchical, la, la, uh, how do you say uh, Yeah, no, you got me on one say too. <laughs> Um, HFS, there you go, for, uh, which is to support uh, the Apple file format. Uh, it's always had support for this format, and uh, basically it's because uh, Apple doesn't have a three-dot extension on its files. It just keeps that information in a stream or a fork. There are two forks, the data fork and resource fork. and. Uh, it just knows if the file is an executable, a text file, things like that, and associates it with the proper program. Um, so Windows, or uh, Microsoft, I should say, uh, decided that would be a good idea to have support for the, this file system. And in doing so, uh, made it possible to create alternate data streams. Uh, an alternate data stream is basically just uh, somewhere to hold little bits of information about the file. It's where some of the comments or summary information is stored. Um, the thing that is fun about alternate data streams or makes them fun to nerds like us is that uh, the file size does not change in the file that hosts that stream. So if you take a 1K or even 7 byte file and decide to chuck 100, 200 a gigs worth of files into a stream on that file, it always looks like it's that 7 byte or 1K file or whatever. So uh, I guess the whole idea yeah. behind that was just for the fact that um, just having support uh, between HFS and NTFS so that you could transfer all that file information from uh, Macintosh computers and still keep it when you transfer it back so that Macintosh knows what that file is and how to open it. And that's just such small amounts of information that I guess they didn't want to add in the support to uh, show those file sizes. Um, yeah, those crazy Mac whores. <laughs> um, so. I guess uh, what I will do a short demonstration on what it takes currently to create alternate data streams uh, by attaching them to files and other good stuff. Um, yeah, look at him for a minute. <laughs> Pay no attention to the porn directory. <laughs> Okay, I'm going to set down the microphone for a second. Do you think you could kind of narrate what I'm doing? Or I can just go like this. Hello. <laughs> now, I actually haven't seen this demo in progress, so I'm going to just watch him as he does it. <laughs> All right. 
can just make stuff up. <laughs> all right. Um, now, the odd part about alternate data streams is you may know that you can attach them to files, um, but you can also attach alternate data streams to individual folders and also the root um, hard drive directory. Um, if you attach alternate data streams to, say, the root um, computer directory just straight to the C, uh, you're not going to be able to delete them. You can clear them out, but they cannot be deleted. So for anyone who wasn't looking at him and was actually watching the screen, because you like to watch people type, uh, I just created the, the host file. So basically just a text file. And then, as you can see, listening to the directory, it shows that the file is 25 bytes. So uh, I shall continue. Now, for those of you that don't know the kind of syntax that alternate data streams use, um, you've just got the file name, a colon, and then the stream name. Um, and this is only going to work in NTFS, uh, obviously not in FAT32 or... So as you can see, I added something into a stream. It still says it's 25 bytes. And just to show you that there is indeed data in that stream, we will pull up Notepad. And you will be wowed and amazed by the fabulous world of alternate data streams. Ta-da. What's that? Uh, oh, it's probably not a good idea. No. So anyway, there is the stream. Um, so obviously, it's not, it's not very nefarious to just put text into a file, um, I guess, if you're writing your memoirs or something and you don't want other people to read them, you could type them into Notepad and hide them in an alternate data stream, and no one would know they're there. Um, what makes alternate data streams a little fun is this. do for you guys? Better? We yeah. All right. Look at me, master window. Thank you. <laughs> That's the talk. So if you can't tell, it's really currently just a big pain in the ass to create and use alternate data streams as he's just sitting here in a uh, command line interface. It really does suck. Um, so you can see that the calc program is you know, 114K or something thereabouts. Um, now, again, I set the mic down. Now, currently, this is actually the only way to uh, to copy files back and forth between alternate data streams and actual files. Um, now, the goal of Project Prometheus is to eventually be able to do all that from a um, from a graphical user interface, um, make it easier to do all this without the uh, command line. So there you go. Um, I just inserted the calc program into the host.txt, and uh, as you can see, it still says that it is 25 bytes. Now, you can see in the uh, where it shows how much space is free. That does change. Uh, 
only after Windows XP Service Pack 1 did they start uh, recognizing the fact that they were not showing that data inside of streams was taking up space on the hard drive. So if you use something like Windows 2000 and you let's say you have a 100 gig hard drive and you put uh, you have two gigs of data on there but you put 98 gigs worth of stuff into an alternate data stream it would just tell you that your drive is full you look at it and it would say it has two gigs but your drive is full so you can imagine what uh, a pain in the ass that would be as an administrator wondering why the drive is full and it's because someone has all kinds of files stored in streams that you can't see or um, if you wanted to be more uh, malicious storing uh, a virus or something that just ate up space on the hard drive until it was full so now what is shown here is that you can actually execute files straight from alternate data streams um, using the start command and he's just run calculator straight from the alternate data stream. amazing uh, so you can see that uh, it, well, these are fun I mean you can put all kinds of things in there uh, you can also um, run these from the run key in the H key local machine hive so if you wanted to have something pop up on startup you can um, go nuts with that uh, again if you if you think on the black hat side of things then um, you can do some some seriously damaging things if not like you know fun things uh, with alternate data streams uh, I if I'm not mistaken, correct me if I'm wrong, I believe there were only two viruses or some, that used virus worm. Are they interchangeable now? Yeah, um, I've only heard of two viruses that actually use alternate data streams, which is why I was so surprised that so many of you have heard about alternate data streams. Um, the, I, the only one I can think of off the top of my head is w two k dot stream. Yeah, so... Um, and I believe 29A was the creator of that virus. For those who don't know who 29A is, they are the leading virus writers in the world. It would, I guess, if if that's like your thing. Um, so there you go. Uh, you can see what a pain in the ass that was to do uh, to insert a file into uh, you know a text file, things like that. But it does have some data hiding potential being that uh, currently Windows itself does not have support to detect uh, alternate data streams within its own file system that they created and put the support there for alternate data streams and then didn't allow you to find them. So um, that's part of what we're trying to take care of as well. There are tools out there. Um, go ahead and tell them what they are. Do I want to pull up the screen? Oh, am I pulling up slides now? Yeah. Awesome. Are you done with your demo? Um, oh, actually, I wanted to do another thing. Um, here, let me bust okay, the... Okay, we'll get to the tools in a minute here. You will no, 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 no. Did I close that? No, there it is. See right here? Now it shows, it, it's showing that it's running in a stream. Again, before Windows XP Service Pack 1, that does not show up. It would just show that. For those that can't read that, it's oh, showing yes. a process as host.txt colon um, hidden yeah, calc, calc or calc. Whatever. Yeah. And then, uh, yeah, what's up? What's that? Uh, did they? Right. Right. I uh, think I think they did fix that in Windows 2K. Yeah, and but again, being a patch, how many systems? <laughs> we all know about patch management. So, how many systems do you think actually took care of that? Probably all of yours, but not many people like across the street. So, uh, oh yeah. By the way, if you have a question, seriously, just yell out because uh, the whole point of this is to kind of get feedback from you guys. Think. Uh, if you have ideas on what features you think should be in there or if we're completely and utterly talking out of our asses, let us know. Yeah, 
is the ability to have two concurrent websites running in the same space with different files. Apparently, IIS at that time supported the reading of ABS in multiple files. Yeah, yeah, and that's exactly um, the only. What he said, though. And I don't think everybody heard him. Uh, well, he was just saying how uh, IIS um, had like been the only time, the only one to support um, writing to alternate data streams, um, and actually made use of alternate data streams. I think was what you were getting at. Okay, he's he's saying that IIS actually had support for um, unintentional yeah unintentional support <laughs> unintentional support for actually um, you'd uh, you'd have your regular website um, and then if you attached the alternate data stream to your URL you had a separate website that kind of a hidden website. Um, and IIS was actually, I was going to get around to that too because it's the first, or it's the only um, actual Windows program that I've heard of that actually makes use of alternate data streams. Um, and it was one of the few things that a lot of tool makers had issues with um, because there's a lot of scanning tools that have to go through there and look for alternate, alternate data streams for viruses and whatnot. And uh, they had to skip over the IIS. Um, stuff if you had it on there. Let's go ahead and back there. Um, no, there isn't actually. Um, there's there. Uh, how does Windows do their summary? They uh, they have file file statistics. I guess if you right click and you go to the properties of a file in Windows 2K and Windows XP, you have different um, different values to describe the file um, in one of the tabs, and that actually attaches to an alternate data stream under some crazy hashed name that I don't think I've ever looked at enough to figure out how that works. I didn't hear what you said. It, it really. Okay, so the Windows equivalent of stack on the bottom line, if the file is a store qualified file, but the store specifier, the Windows equivalent of that would be the size there, or the Windows stack that has a little bit of file, and then the file. Yeah, I don't know. Um, I don't think it supports alternate data streams. Um, there is a lot of stuff out there that just doesn't touch alternate data streams out there. Um, I know there's not a lot of. Obviously, it doesn't list alternate data streams in the Explorer. Um, and you're not going to get file size statistics. And that's also one of the other goals of Project Prometheus is to give you that information. Uh, are you saying attached to a file that does not exist? You want to find out? <laughs> All right. Uh, what am I doing? <laughs> there were Windows programs that were starting to use this. It was when you use something like labs and look down the through and see what's there. And yeah, I'm actually. Um, that's like the. He's saying. Uh, I'm sorry. You're going to have to repeat it. Um, they are resource forks, alternate data streams, um, in the same sense that they're used on Macintosh. They're used the same in Windows. Um, I'm going to get around to the tools, though, in a minute here, um, because I've got a number of tools that I've looked into um, for manipulating alternate data streams. Um, 
and uh, I mean in the sense that we're creating another tool I'd like to know what other tools are out there for use and I couldn't find anything that does quite what we want to do and which is why we've started up this project there you go there's your answer <laughs> so it does uh, if you create just the stream it creates the host file and then gives it a zero byte uh, so fabulous so interactive I, I, what are you saying are, are you, you saying, saying the including the alternate data streams oh I, I think I get what you're saying um, it, it does exactly what we're looking at right here so it, it'll just add up what we've got and it shows you what the but it does not show you the streams like Explorer um, doesn't have it's it's the same support that we're looking at like they uh, there it's obviously you know we have some some flaws and we're hoping to exploit them to make a pretty cool privacy tool so um, you want to continue on with what the what we're we're attempting to do yeah um, let me get into first oh, slide what what tools are out there um, so that we have an idea of what we're looking at as far as what what's currently out there for manipulating alternate data streams um, first up we we of course have uh, LADS um, which is a simple command line interface um, and will do single folder you can check on a single folder to see what kind of alternate data streams are in there um, that was written by Frank Hayden I believe um, that that seems to be the most popular tool out there right now for scanning for alternate data streams um, checking again to see if you have either of those two single viruses out there that use alternate data streams um, moving on you have crucial ADS it's a, another simple uh, directory scan directory and drive scan it will scan the entire drive for alternate data streams um, you have sys internals streams version 1.5 and that's another single folder alternate data stream detection and also has support for deleting um, alternate data streams and I which currently you can't do sorry I was cutting you off but you can't do that without yeah. actually copying the file to somewhere else uh, deleting the original and then copying it back so um, like that's a you know another pain it's like in order to delete something that you put in there you have to delete the host file and you can put uh, a ridiculous amount of streams into each host file and uh, if you just want to get rid of one you would have to you know get rid of them all so yes you actually have to delete the file you have to copy the file um, no no like you uh, any if you move if you're moving the file back and forth between any uh, NTFS system using like let's say even across a network if you map a drive or something like that you can the and it's NTFS to NTFS the it will transfer that data stream across so the only way to delete any of the streams that you have in there is to you know copy it over you could copy if it was small enough you could put it on a floppy disk because they're usually fat you know formatted and uh, you know that's another way to delete the streams if you copy it over to a fat drive but you know that is a little bit ridiculous to have to go through that just and again uh, you know losing if you you know use a file to put multiple streams in and you just want to get rid of one and obviously it's not uh, the hottest thing to use for any kind of file management so going on moving on um, I've heard of a program called file scavenger which um, which is a restoration tool file restoration tool um, restore all of your deleted files that claims that they can even restore um, information in alternate data streams I haven't looked into that one so um, has anyone strategy. has anyone played with streams enough to have checked out some of these all right um, you also have scan ADS um, as implied it scans for alternate data streams um, you have NT objectives forensic toolkit um, and that is again yet another um, alternate data stream scanner and then you have tripwire um, another ADS scanner so, um, so basically all the tools out there right now are just tools for scanning and finding 
alternate data streams. I couldn't find anything for creating your own data streams, for manipulating them in any way, um, for just about doing anything with them. The only thing out there is just for scanning alternate data streams. So everybody's willing to get rid of them, but what if you wanted to create them? Then you have to go through, you know, the uh, ridiculous task of, you know, doing it manually for each one, and uh, it's a little tedious. So, uh, going on. Um, so what we're what we're attempting to do here uh, with Project Prometheus is create a program just for doing what we want to do here now is actually manipulating the streams, using them for our advantage, using them for data hiding. Um, I mean, even with Service Pack 1 in Windows XP, um, it, it might actually, it reports the, uh, the full drive um, free space correctly, and it also shows in the uh, task manager any executable ADS streams, it does show them what they are. Um, but even at that, individual files, if you, even, if you know that there's ADS on the drive, you still don't know what file they're attached to, um, even with X, uh, XP Service Pack 1. Um, so there's a, lot of, uh, there's a lot of opportunity in there to take advantage of that. Um, and so what we want to do is create a tool that makes it easy for you to drag and drop files into alternate data streams on a single host file, um, not just like one or two files. Um, in this case, with even doing it manually, you're only going to be able to throw one file in an alternate data stream, and you got to do it manually every time. Yeah, and uh, so basically, like what what it, we had when we started doing this in was it February? Like we have you know a little bit of code, but uh, again. <laughs> We, right now we do the DEF CON movie channel, the scavenger hunt. Um, some of the guys also from the area are other goons. Um, we're doing the latest link this con and all other kinds of good stuff. And, you know, so it was busy leading up to this. But uh, we're uh, looking, we called it ADS Explorer and uh, we're uh, and then decided that that name was lame, and so Project Prometheus is its development name. Uh, I wish Russ was here because um, he does some work with different covert channels and stuff like that, and he thinks that he has discovered a way to uh, manipulate the data in such a way, because right now you can't transfer alternate data streams over FTP or anything like that, but he thinks he has figured out a way to uh, make the data encapsulate in such a way that we can pass them wherever the hell we want as long as they eventually end up on an NTFS system. Um, so that could be fun. Um, and I, I'd also like to apologize right now for us being so monotone and ridiculous because he got heat stroke yesterday and I almost got hypothermia. So <laughs> it's like two sides of the spectrum. Uh, I was in the dunk tank and they poured 60 pounds of ice in there. Um, for anybody who saw me shivering uh, in 102 degree weather. Um, so, next slide. Yeah. Yeah. Um, okay, so, yeah. Um, so, we have some basic requirements for the tool, and that includes reading, writing, being able to throw more than one file into a single host file. Um, and the idea behind that is actually going to be where we have one single file goes into one single ADS stream. Um, and then there's going to be one main alternate data stream that has all of the file information that our program will read and be able to tell you what's in those alternate data streams. So what you see here is um, you see a host file. Um, in this case, I called it DLL for the reasons that I wanted to point out that alternate data streams can be attached to system files. Um, and the Windows, or what, what is it that Windows has uh, protection to watch the system files so they're not changed? Uh, yeah, Windows file protection. Thanks, whoever was back there. Um, but uh, that actually does not watch alternate data streams. Um, if you attach an alternate data stream to a system file, it's not going to change how that system file works, and it doesn't pose any threat, so Windows file prote uh, protection doesn't 
um, warn against that. Um, but the thing is, is those files cannot be deleted by the user. Thus, your alternate data streams attached to it are usually pretty safe where they're sitting. Um, that's another thing is your alternate data streams only have um, as much access as you do to the file. So it'd have to be an administrator to attach to those system files. Right. It, uh, it inherits whatever uh, permissions the host file has. So. Um, Thanks. Yeah. Actually, I was going to get to that later. Oh, well, too late. Um, uh, also, one of the other things that we want our tool um, to go over is being able to delete alternate data streams um, because it's obviously a pain to move the file um, and then move it back or copy the file, delete the original, and move it back and making it just uh, it's it's really hard to do that with a multiple file system where it's, we're attaching multiple streams and we can't delete single streams. Um, the tool will also take care of making sure that the right streams that you want to keep will stay in there um, and that will just save you a lot of time overall <laughs> um, basically if you're a you know 16 year old kid sitting in the audience living at your mom's house using your mom's computer and you have all kinds of porn and you want to hide it somewhere an alternate data stream is a good place to do it it's just really really hard right now we're, get, we're doing this for the kids. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so obviously some of the features of the program has got to be, it's, it's got to be a hidden kind of program. Um, if you know where the program is and it's installed on the computer, um, anybody and everybody can find that and realize that you're probably hiding stuff in alternate data streams. Um, so one of the goals is to keep it a semi-hidden interface, maybe explore shell extensions. Um, that's all hypothetical from here. We still haven't worked out implementation on that. Yeah, basically the reason we're here is we want your brains. You know, uh, yeah. you know uh, we've been coming to DEF CON for a few years, and regardless of what the media says, there's some unbelievably intelligent people in these audiences, so we'll... Uh, will exploit you. Um, so if you have further ideas to add on to how you might think the we should work this program, go ahead and speak up. Um, we, uh, um, go ahead. You can attach, uh, can you create, a, are you saying create a directory or attach streams to a directory? Um, so throw a whole directory in an alternate data stream? No, you can't, and that's actually what, what our tool is going to be able to do is uh, with the sense that you can throw in multiple files and we'll have that single um, alternate data stream that says all the file information, it will also hold folder information, and I'll get to that in a minute here. But with the tool, you will be able to throw entire folders into alternate data streams. Um, no, I'm sorry. The, the, that was uh, the gentleman back there asked that question and again they, uh, it will, the, the files that you attach in the streams uh, will, will have the same uh, attributes that the host file has so you set the permissions on the host file for whatever files are, are within it so um, hopefully uh, this thing will be pretty cool when we're done with it we're, we're pretty excited about it and we figure you know uh, Microsoft likes to call their bugs features. We'll actually make one one. So. Um, some other ideas that we had jumping into the program, and this is this is far from implementation. I mean, this is uh, one other idea that we had that the tool had the possibility of is if we're hiding the data, um, why not add in more tools for hiding, and we can build in possible combinations of stenography. Um, steganography. We're not steganography. in a courtroom here. <laughs> <laughs> and also possibly some crypto uh, cryptography. Um, possibly some integration with Windows privacy tools. Um, yeah. Automatic encryption upon throwing into an alternate data stream. Uh, we were also uh, 
discussing that like the settings on the program or it would have paranoia levels where at you know at one level you could have uh, password authentication the next level would be encryption uh, you know another level that um, that we were talking about was um, which I guess we'll probably touch on a little more is taking a um, taking a, a file and then splitting it into multiple streams on multiple host files um, I don't know if anybody is familiar with par 2 the the you know for anyone familiar with that well, not that I do anything with wares but in the where scene or like movies and things like that pirate movies that usually will include par 2 files or and and then if any file has had any kind of corruption or anything like that if there can be a significant chunk of a file missing but uh, using the part two files, you can correct those files and then um, and move on. So we're hoping. Uh, I was talking with uh, Dan Kaminsky about this. If anybody's familiar with Dan's work, and he uh, he said that there's another um, like algorithm out there that that someone is working on that's better than part two and um, can actually reclaim um, up to ten percent of any corrupted data so um, we'll be talking with Dan more in the future about that and uh, and different aspects of the project but uh, uh, because he's smart um, and uh, so it let's say you split it up into you have something that's very important to you you don't want people to find it it gets encrypted there's also a password and then you split it up into 20 different files and one of those files gets deleted you, one of the host files is deleted somewhere you don't have to worry about you know, losing that if the file's so important that you've done all of these things to it, and having it, and then your host file gets deleted. In the same, suck. in the same sense that you're hiding it in alternate data streams, and nobody knows it's there. There's the possibility that somebody might delete the file, not knowing that you've got other stuff in it. Right, which is where attaching it to a system file or something like that would, you know, be good. Yeah, go ahead. All right, uh, he's he's talking about uh, he's read up on um, possible DOSing um, by attaching what was it six thousand in excess of six thousand alternate data streams attached to a single system file can lock up the system. Um, yeah, you know, I haven't read anything like that. Other but this we'll point. do it and see what happens. <laughs> um, also, I know in my own uh, personal experience that not not necessarily, uh, and I don't even know. Like you know, I just did it on you know two or three different machines, and maybe I just set up my systems different. But um, after so many gigs of data, it gets really hard to st to work with them as well. So uh, using multiple host uh, files is you know the a really good way to do it. I mean, it's it gigs and gigs of data nothing like you know if you're using a couple hundred megs um, then you don't really have to worry about it but uh, when you get into the ridiculous um, file sizes and ridiculous sizes of streams then then there are some lag issues so uh, again we'll be doing a lot of testing with that and seeing what we can break oh, yeah is there something else to add to that one Mm -hmm. So, yeah, there you go. <laughs> Very good point. Well, we'll, we'll leave, uh, he's saying maybe the solution is just to attach it straight to the root volume directory um, because you cannot delete them. Um, we'll leave the option open for the user to decide to throw it there or not. Um, you can put we'll it also, anywhere you want. Yeah, it's you your can put computer. it wherever you want. <laughs> In the red shirt. Uh, I don't think that zip recognizes alternate data streams, so it just I think it just trashes them. I don't I, I don't yeah. think it looks for them. Again, going system. back to the fact that there are not a lot of programs out there that support doing anything with alternate data uh, data streams, you just end up losing them. People pretty much ignore them, and they're really kind of 
cool to play with. I mean, you can do some some really cool things. So we hope by creating this tool. <coughs> Continue. <laughs> <coughs> I think I coughed up some lung there or something. Too much smoke in Vegas. I'll let him think about what he's thinking there for a minute. We'll take another question. Um, again, the only programs I've seen that use them, aside from Mac using them for file information, um, is IIS um, using it to thumbnail images um, for web space. And that's the only other time I've seen it actually legitimately used, aside from the two viruses. What's that? Are they using more uh, image thumbnailing? Okay, he's saying Office 2000. He's saying with Office 2003, um, uses alternate data streams for uh, session saving, um, just to be able to back up your da uh, back up your data. And that's when you download what kind of stuff? Uh, is that just EXEs that you, like he was saying that uh, in Service Pack 2 for Windows XP, uh, when you use Internet Explorer and download EXEs that it uh, stores in the alternate data stream what zone you downloaded from, is that all EXEs from anywhere while using Internet Explorer, or is that only from Microsoft? Using Internet Explorer. All right. Um, I, something that, like, I, to touch on that point, I, I, I'm liking the fact that Microsoft tends to use these more. I think that they've uh, realized that they put something in there that you know not many people are aware is there, and they're using it more and more. Uh, because we, when we were discussing doing this, we were like, well, what, what happens when Longhorn comes along and then, you know, if they don't have support for alternate data streams or anything, but they seem to be using it in their products and things like that. So, you know, it, it'll it be there and we'll be happy. Uh, there, go ahead. Yes, yes, you can attach alternate data streams to a directory. So uh, in the back there in the... I'm not aware of that. Um, I don't know. Let's find out. <laughs> um, that's up to the tool that you're using for encryption. Again, the tool, like his question was, what about encryption? If you encrypt the file, does it, um, does it encrypt the stream as well? And that's, if the tool doesn't recognize that the stream is there, then I don't believe that it would, which is why we're hoping that we can just drag files and drop them on and then we'll encrypt on, on the fly and then you know, you'll, you'll be sure that your information is, um, is safe uh, from the prying eyes of your mom. Um, or wife. <laughs> Good one. Um, so, all right, over here.
modify that to make it uh, add to wear hmm. uh, program. Yeah, I haven't played with that, so I don't know. <laughs> yeah, we'll talk with you after this, too. You're that guy <laughs> and that guy back there. <laughs> yeah, go ahead. They're saying if .NET Access um, supports it. Oh, how you access streams in your code. Um, you use the same file syntax, actually. Uh, Microsoft has a technical paper on, um, on how to write up your code to access alternate data streams. Um, I don't have a link on me right now, but you, um, We'll be showing some contact information afterwards, and you can go ahead and email me, and I'll give you the link to that. Um, yeah, moving on. Well, you jerk! How do I go back? Backspace, I think. There we go. Okay. Um, moving on. Uh, we've got um, for the implementation of this program. Um, we decided, well, we've got to have this single, that you've got to have the single ADS stream with information on the file. Um, if we're going to be able to support multiple files, um, you've got to know where those files are, what streams they're on. Um, and this, uh, so basically how the idea for doing this is um, we've got a single XML structure in one given name alternate data stream such uh, and it will look something like this um, where you've got the file system um, the type whether it's a single file host file or whether it's multiple um, host files um, which is going back to the idea of the multiple host files for data recovery stuff uh, in case one of your files gets deleted um, we'll have to go more into that when we get down to it. Um, basically, and then you have the folder tag, again, being able to support multiple files in there along with the folder information. So when you extract it out of there, you can extract whole folders or you can put multiple folders in there, um, basically all in one host file. Um, now, what it's going to do when you put those files in there is uh, it's it's going to go through the program. Program's going to say, here's the folder and file information. It's going to hash together some sort of hashed number um, to determine a alternate data stream to assign it to. Um, in the same sense that we're hiding files, if you've got tools to scan those alternate data streams and it comes up with names, um, that's basically going to hide the file name because you're just going to get a data stream that says, you know, you have this data stream attached that's called A942BC23F3, which isn't going to give anybody any idea. Um, uh, okay, move on. Here's, um, here's the XML for the multiple host file. Um, I just wrote this up like an hour ago, so. <laughs> Um, this is all um, just ideas floating, the, floating around. Um, and this just shows how we might go about being able to span multiple host files um, for, specific, um, for specific attached alternate data stream files. Um, and it's going to pretty much be the program decides which data streams to assign it to on what files, and every file that has them is going to keep information on what other host files might contain other folders and file information. And every one of the host files will contain the same XML that says, here's our host files. Right. Yeah. Um, here's the contact information. and. Um, 
Yeah, we're almost out of time. Is there any other questions real quick? And then if anybody is interested in helping out with this, you can get a hold of us. There's our information, grifter at rootcompromise.org and tira at it's nuke, not gnuck, uh, <laughs> nuke.net. And then um, dc801.org doesn't have anything up on it right now. The project will be going up on there shortly. And if you would like to talk to us real time, we are always, and I mean always, in IRC, in pound UT2600 on FNET. Um, so, thank you. <laughs>